exhibit A, the amp gauge setup from behind. Now this is on a 70 Dodge truck, but Mopar used this a lot, so this will be good for explanation purposes. These two guys right here are where your entire charging system runs through on most of the factory wiring 60s and 70s Mopars. And what happens is, if you can see, these are, this one's already kind of started it. This is a pretty good one. Uh, this, this little insulative piece here is starting to deteriorate. This one's in really good shape. It'll probably last for a long time. But you can see where it's been hot. You see down in there, if I can get it to focus on that. Yeah, okay, you can see where it's been hot on this post here, or, or just the amp draw that's through it. So why this is a bad idea, focus, is that uh, if this deteriorates or winds up getting broken, this is metal and those fall, these two fall short out against the case, and you have this really nice fat wire supplying a really hot direct line to your battery. Now, hopefully um, somebody hasn't cut out those damn fusible links and uh, just put wire back in and your fusible link will catch it and it'll burn through and you'll see a little bit of a smoke show, but uh, it'll save your car. Well, a lot of people replace those not understanding what a fusible link's job is and uh, you get a direct link to the battery that doesn't burn itself in half and it burns itself into the rest of the wires, creating shorts everywhere and burning the shit out of everything in your car and maybe even your car itself. So we're gonna fix this today. Previous owner of the truck learned why the ammeter setup is stupid. Did I mention that? But focus, chose instead of correcting the problem to reroute bigger wire through the firewall grommeted yes but right next to some abrasive things that would have worn a hole in the jacket eventually and shorted out to ground uh, eventually that would have created a problem i got some other things i gotta clean up here that's pretty typical of a truck that's been outside most of its life we'll clean those up too but this is the main power lead through the harness and you can see it has burnt the bejesus out of the harness. Um, which is why it's stupid to do this and to run all of your connection or run all of your juice in your system through a connection that eventually looks... Focus. Like this. And you can run all the wire, you can run thick wire, you, doesn't matter if your connections look like this you're you're going to create heat with resistance so this is why this got hot this is why somebody's been in here before me and instead of correcting it and ditching the ammeter setup they just ran bigger wire to it in a different way so they probably did him a favor and uh just routed straight wire around it so i won't bag on them too hard but uh running it through a grommet that eventually will fail and expose your wire to uh, the rest of the, this is a brake line that you can't, it had a, uh, it has a uh, auxiliary brake set up for a trailer on it. And, and uh, it's gonna abrade through eventually. So what we will do is we'll take this, uh, typically I run a, 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 a drill bit through these and make them bigger, but this one doesn't need it. Uh, it's already burnt substantially up. A large hole so I will run a new lead through the harness or make it look like it comes through the harness and instead of making an end on it uh, I just run it straight through and I don't I don't break it uh, I run it through the firewall so uh, I also we won't be running the weight of the system through this so really we're just powering we could even step down and wire size if we wanted to I'm not gonna but you're really powering everything inside the vehicle, inside the vehicle now through that lead instead of everything in the vehicle through that lead, which is a much safer setup. Also, there is a fusible link, which we dug out, which thankfully somebody who worked on this knew 
at least that much. And they put a fusible link in here and it's soldered. Um, so focus. So it's, it's not terrible work. Um, I've, I was worried about what I'd find because this is the same truck I found house connectors in the, in the rear end on. So you can see they at least soldered it. It's, it's a solid job. It was doing fine. So we're going to get rid of that and uh, put new fusible link in it and move on. And here's the, uh, here's a face of the fuse box. Um, it's crusty, but it still works. So I don't care. I'm not messing with, we're not putting people on the moon with it, but, uh, there's a couple little neat tabs on the back of these that I just noticed that would be real nice to tie into without breaking into your harness or cutting wires. You can just put a little spade connector on that and plug right in and fuse it in. So there you go. There's your little tip of the day. And there is, if I can get to it, oh, that's gonna hurt. Okay. You can kind of see this wire. No, okay. You can kind of see, focus, focus on the right thing. Yeah. You can kind of see that wire right there that I'm wiggling. That's the one I brought through. And I'm just gonna bring it all the way up to the back of the dash. And it's fused, so we got no worries about that. And I'll just tie anything I need. This will actually this will uh, join up to the Jesus connection. The big Mopar crazy uh, all positives lead to this behind the dash connection. So that's where this one will go behind the dash, but it'll just handle everything positive behind the dash. Okay, for you Dodge truck fans, here's some fuse box porn, I guess, for you. Uh, this is what the back of that bulkhead we were looking at looks like. And uh, it's a little different than I'm used to dealing with. Um, car, 70, 70 Plymouth and Dodge harnesses for a car don't look like this. Uh, well, they might, but they surely don't have the fuse box bolted right to them. So if you're going to do that little mod I was just telling you about, running a, running a drill bit through, be real careful and only go as deep as you need to. So here's a fairly clean view of what's going on down here next to the starter relay. Mopar's used this starter relay on several uh, several of their things, so it should be fairly self-explanatory. That big fat lead coming into the left that jumps onto the starter relay, um, this red one here, that comes off of the alternator. The uh, Big, big fat lead one going down here. That's goes to the starter. Um, this guy here, that's a 14 gauge fusible link, I think. And that is going to be run inside uh, to the uh, to the original harness. And I'll show you where that jumps in. And what I did, instead of putting a fusible link down there, forgive the grease, this is a driver. Um, I put one on the back of this, uh, the alternator so it wouldn't be as hard to find or diagnose if and when it smokes. So that one's a 12 gauge. I think it's a little big. I don't think I need that big a relay, but, or a, sorry, a, a fusible link, but we'll see. So I put it there and I ran a new 10 or bigger wire, might be eight, I'm not sure, over to the jumper on that. And this would be the central connection point off the alternator. So the alternator is isolated if it freaks out and creates a lot of heat. The, uh, the fusible link on the other side pops. Um, if something in the dash crosses out, uh, the fusible link here pops. So uh, the one that's not in the picture is the battery terminal here uh, and it jumpers on. When, when I'm done, I'll put that on. So that's, that's what it looks like there. If you travel up to that damaged harness, um, I took a drill bit. This is what I was telling you about. Took a drill bit and I opened it up a little bit. It didn't really need that much, but I'm gonna run this wire all the way inside. Uh, it'll go in and yeah, I won't be able to unplug this, but let's be honest, how often do we really unplug these? So uh, this is, I think this is the wiring harness for the front lights and whatnot. So uh, I'm gonna clean those up and plug it back in and I'll probably never have this open again. So that's how that's gonna go. So here's another view of that 70 cluster you didn't see or haven't shown. Um, you can see where the amp gauge is and its relationship on the back. Those are those two posts I was telling you about. This is, this is a different dash. So um, exhibit, I don't know, if you needed more. 
uh, exhibit 5,000 uh, about what goes on with these guys. But you'll see that's the positive and negative that runs the entire, the entire system runs through it essentially. And then this gauge just determines the amount of draw on it. So having said that, I've come up with a solution. It's not mine. I just, I've done it to where you cut the face of this off and you see those two drip, these, those two rivets there. You just drill them off, use the face and implant the face onto another gauge. So again, my messy shop here, but this is a 70 Roadrunner cluster that I did, and that is an amp gauge face on a voltmeter that I put in. So you can see it took a little custom, but I just cut the face off of a new voltmeter, and the, the spacing of the poles isn't that far apart, and it fits right in. And uh, I don't know if you're staring at that, you might notice that it wasn't on zero, but you know, um, you'd see a lot of other things on my car if you were staring that hard. But, you know, really it didn't, it's not obvious. And when it's running, it runs uh, around zero, but I know what that means. So right now it's actually showing zero volts. And then when it gets up to 12, it's about zero and so on and so forth. So there you go. That's how, that's how we plan on doing any of the other ones I'm going to do, including this one. Because um, really all I need is that needle and that face. And the rest of it's going to be cobbled together onto a new volt gauge.